Where's the music? Oh, yeah. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Episode 100. We did it. Uh, we did it, Marcus. Joel Fleischman Happy Hour Podcast. We got Albert and Joel here today. Cheers. Hey. Cheers. Prost. Prost. Salute. Cheers. Cheers, Marcus. Got some water here. Yeah, All right. Nice. Episode 100. Marcus, you've been with us how long? I was thinking um, probably at least half, close to half. Yeah, well, oh, hey, hold, it's actually on the big screen up there. We got yeah. holding at 61, so you're not quite half. Yep. You're 39. In. But I had started a little bit before Oh, you're that. right. You yep. probably have Because that half. was the send-off okay. one yeah. that Jackson was on, too. Yep, you didn't um, do them consistently. So I bet you are at it, close it's, to 50. It's, uh, it's close there, though. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fun ride between team members and community members. and It's evolved. It is. Yeah. So I'm still waiting for more of the Expo stuff to come out. Yeah. You have a long ways to go. You've got a few more nuggets on there yet. For Are you milking sure. that out for a while? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Trying to drop a few things. All right. Great. How yeah. much how, how much time you spend doing this? Um, not a lot, really, because we don't usually have to edit much. So it's really just kind of uploading it, which takes, I mean, a half hour. But once it starts uploading, it's not like you got to sit there and watch it. You just get it going. And so we do what we do. It's about a half an hour episode, and then you got about a half an hour editing hour. Probably. Yeah. Hour and I'm, hour I'm hour. always trying to be efficient, you know. Yeah. Yep. Well, then ask questions. Let's get it going for my dad. Yeah. Uh, so, Albert, this is, I believe, your second podcast. You were on one, I think, with Paul Rice and Eric Kane back around COVID time. Yeah, I think the, so. I think you're right. Yeah. 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 Episode four, five, six. Yeah. Four, three. In the infancy. Well, yeah. So, bring it all back around here. Um, I know I was having lunch with you the other day talking about um, Walters and um, kind of what you were doing beforehand. Can you just kind of give a brief introduction on how things started with Campbellsport Building Supply? Well, I was working for Walters, and I had grown up the ladder there and was a general manager, spending a lot of time on the road. And it was, uh, my father, my father-in-law was dying of cancer. I was gone a lot overnight, leaving on Sunday and coming back Friday and blah, 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 blah. And then this little lumberyard in Camelsport, b and closed up in November. And the town was without a lumberyard, and that's how it started. And one and one put two together, and then we tried to get financing and couldn't, couldn't get SBA loan, and just kept fighting for it. Finally got it, and then April first we got her done. So, yeah. What do you remember most? I mean, that was had to be middle school into high school, right? And obviously college for you. What do you remember, like you know, purchasing lumber yard and, and what that all was like from your age? I know my dad and my mom. Hi, mom. Would uh, pick our would pick our brain uh, for. I remember picking out the name, and then kind of picking out the logo. And picking out the color, and that was all kind of really exciting. And I do kind of remember the first tour of it. You know, I remember my dad being very proud. Um, and I was like, oh, this is kind of crazy. So it's kind of cool. I remember that stuff. Yeah. So obviously. It was like at the kitchen table. They was like picking out the colors and picking out the names and like, what do you guys think, you know? Right. And history-wise, from basically 85 till about 98, obviously it was just Camel Sport. Right. Um, and you guys were doing basically anything, right? I mean, kind of generate business. I mean, there was yep. really anything, no job too small kind of anything thing. Anything we could figure out what to do. Yep, from building picnic tables to mailboxes to building fence for uh, Don Jones and Fond Lake was a big job for us. And pool buildings, I mean, it, it didn't matter. Whatever. Mini storage sheds, fixing yeah. screens, uh, Selling sold, paint. sell paint. No, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, just anything, whatever it took, you know. So, so what made it, what was that uh, step like to go by Berlin? Uh, it was four mile lumber, correct? Correct. It was four mile lumber, and we, I don't know how we heard about it even, but uh, the goal was that we were going to buy it and use seller inventory at auction and make it disappear. They weren't our competition or anything. Um, it was land across the street was probably as valuable or more than the pro- than the than the business. Yes, which we sold off. It was f- forty acres across the road. It was an eighty acre farm with a lumber yard on it. Okay. Basically, the farmer to the south bought forty, and we ended up with whatever. But then Craig Johnson was here, and he was coming up the ladder too, and he said, "You know, if you ever open another lum- lumber yard up, he said I, he'd, he'd like to run it." I told Joel, I says, "If we don't give him that, he's going to leave us because they need the opportunity to grow." So, and there was very low risk because we knew we could make money on the property to the north and we could always bring the inventory back so i mean there was more so there, wasn't way, a lot of risk there was way more there. risk than we thought there was you know right <laughs> yeah, sure. you have sunken costs invested <laughs> interest and time and all that that we didn't understand or at least i didn't understand no, that we didn't. uh we just thought we'd send craig up there and if it didn't work we'd send him back and uh, uh there was a little bit more to it than that so well, so was, what, what was some of that stuff that you that you didn't anticipate originally well it was getting material there that that contractors wanted and we didn't have, you know, we had inventory here in Camelsford, but up there we didn't have any money allotted for putting whatever it was, 200 grand worth of inventory in the ground. Sure. So I literally drove up with um, uh, 
Mully, Mully. Yeah. Every Jeremy, almost Jeremy every day Mullock. with a, with a one ton, with me and Mully went up and and took and took material up and brought some back or whatever we did. I don't know what, but yeah, it was interesting. And then the year after we bought it, there was a big hailstorm up there. I mean, a huge hailstorm, with hailstones the size of golf balls bent bigger. So windows were knocked out, screens were shot, roofs were shot, and it went from. Uh, Selling, selling visqueen. As we so we ran out of visqueen on the first it's day. Plastic, which is plastic, really wrap it up, yeah. just to cover up the roofs and stuff, what have you, and tarps and, and then and then we became known for giving good service because contractor says if you got this, yeah, we do, we can get you some. We had a haul out of Campbellsport or whatever it came from, so we just brought it all in very right. rapidly. And a lot of the local yards ran out of materials, and then we had enough moxie or uh, creativity or a little bit of buying power. That he was able to get those materials through Campbellsport Building Supply, sure. and 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 distribute it into Berlin. And so builders would say, "Do you have that?" And we'd say, "Yeah, we do." We'd say, "I need a ton of it." Yeah. So I think we were doing through a shingle, a semi load of shingles a day, wow. and yeah. a, a semi load of felt a week, which is still a lot, right? With as big as we are now. I mean, was that just kind of perfect timing in terms of you guys buying it, and then yeah. obviously yeah, having well, it? And then we had enough manpower and moxie to do it, as Joel would say. And then we had. So these these windows all had to be repaired and screens, which you know had holes in. So we had three guys fixing screens every day, all day long, in windows. Ten hour days. Yeah, ten hour days. So then the hardware store in town had so many. He brought his down and said, "You guys can fix them." He said, "We won't get at them for years." So, and every one of them became a customer because we took care of their windows. We, you know, we were able to handle stuff. So we became known for service and honesty and all that good stuff. So, that really got us on our feet, you know. And then, obviously, I think it was like four years later, roughly, the the, the Tri County purchase, um, you know, yep. between Keel and New Holstein. Did you feel a lot more confident in terms of buying another, you know, location at that point in terms of going through Berlin and kind of seeing? Yes, you know, the yeah, we, there's no doubt we did. You know, and I had talked to Jonathan Lown, oh, I think before I even bought Berlin. I, I had asked him if we were going to sell, you know, he was up in age. And, uh, and finally he called me and we got together and and then we had, it was two yards, was, was the New Holstein and Kiel. Mm -hmm. And New Holstein we never opened up, which created some hard feelings in the, in, in, in the community. And then we had auction, and that was one of our, it was our first auction, I think. And it went over just beyond belief. We just sold shit to junk and whatnot. <laughs> Including the property that day. Really? Yeah, yeah, we sold the property. All the, all the inventory and the property, all the machines, all the equipment, all the office furniture, everything was sold that day at auction. Yep. We had, we had two rings going, auctioneers going, and what have you. Sold, sold the workbenches, sold everything. <laughs> just went. Mm -hmm. It was a good time. So obviously, I um, talked to you b brief, uh, both of you briefly about this, where I think neither of you thought where Drexel's at right now, you guys would have ever foreseen. What did you think maybe was the ceiling? You know, did you ever have a thought of if we could get to this? That's my dad's point? ringtone. If you're hearing the little <laughs> ring of fire in the background, so <laughs> little Jack phones going. Yeah. Out. Sorry, sorry. No, I'll, I'll so I do remember. Um, you know, I'm young and foolish, right? And I. And I made a chart when I started. I wish I would have kept it. It was a piece of paper. And I thought someday we could maybe be, and I think I started in 96 or nine, 96 full time. And I thought in 14 years, and I thought I had a good ring to it, um, in 2010, we'd be a $10 million yard. Uh, and I thought that would be pretty cool. And I think in 2010, we maybe did 50 million to kind of give you like, yeah, perspective, the, the, right? the perspective uh, thought process there. For sure. Albert, was there, I mean, starting in 85, was there ever any thought of, like, if we could get to here, that'd be, you know, to the moon for us? No, I didn't think that. I just wanted to get, it seemed we were constantly fighting to get over the hump. That we had enough inventory, we had enough money to borrow. We're just a bear. <coughs> Cough. <coughs> Sorry. But anyway, just a bear. We're just, but, and we finally, get over the hump and then we'd buy another goddamn truck and here we go we'd be off to the races again you know yeah i can remember my mom and dad uh kind of i shouldn't say fighting but uh disagreeing that night and mom's like we're not gonna have enough payroll next week <laughs> we are not gonna have enough payroll and my dad's say, like, it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine <laughs> uh but that that was numerous times the first few years that i remember as a kid and i don't know if that yeah. was something i just remember if it was well real, we had all these know. charge accounts and so when when the bills had to go out on the first of the month right and we had to be paid by the 10th of the month because we owed money on the 10th of the month. So the girls, anybody that worked in, in, the, in putting out the bills, we called them queen for a day. They didn't have to answer the phone or anything. You get them doggone bills out, they gotta go out today regardless of what you do. 
and that was all hand done with yeah they didn't have they didn't have a computer or nothing it was all, oh, all they, hand done. somebody wrote an invoice bought something they hand wrote it on a, on a card and then they had to calculate it all or add it with a yeah it was. I, I was probably 14 maybe 15 not 16 but i would come in and i would actually extend the the bills out so I would take four times eight, make it 32, and then I'd add the sales tax at the bottom because that'd all be done by hand. Um, somebody had to do it, and they'd kind of get behind, and I'd actually extend yeah. the invoices out. Yeah. I think which is a great segue to, you know, I always think about we're at, you know, nearly 800 team members here, and I think a lot of people that start maybe don't realize what the past was like. So obviously some of that stuff, with whether it's finance, technology, what's other things that you think that today it's like, if you were here 25 years ago, here's how we had to do it, you know, to kind of put in perspective of maybe how far for things have come over, uh, over time. Well, one thing we can talk about is just communication in the yard. So, um, you know, that's really still done by walkie talkies mainly. And uh, what would happen was, which is this is kind of a fun story. So somebody would walk into our yard and again, it, it wasn't a ton of traffic, but you'd be uh, pulling a load out in the, in the yard and there'd only be one forklift. So somebody would be actually pulling it by hand and putting it directly on the truck. And uh, they had no communication initially, probably first four or five, five years at least, because I was already working there. And uh, they would just scream out in the yard. And a lot of times it was Judy Christensen, hi Judy if she's listening, which probably isn't, but hi Judy, <laughs> still alive. Uh, and in, a lot of times it would be Judy and she would just scream as loud as she could. There's somebody coming out for some two by fours. And you're like, or oh, we got Albert said we got a delivery. You got to get up here. And I'd be like, what? You got to get up here. Like, oh my God, okay. And then we finally got these speakers, but you couldn't reply back. So you could press a button. They'd just say, hey, we got a delivery come on up. Or somebody's coming out to number, you know, out for lumber. We didn't have things numbered out for some treated wood. And so that was at least a heads up better than a scream. Sure. And then, uh, then we finally got walkie-talkie, so that was kind of interesting. What about you, Dad? What are different things that we had a well, did differently? Well, that speaker, so we had the speaker for the yard. You press the button and say, "Customer coming out to number three year for this or that," you know. So Joel and his, I think it was Chad Cook, Chad and some, Cook of his, yeah. some of his cronies. It's just me and Chad, <laughs> or whatever. It me was. and Chad after school. Well, that was it. What was on a Saturday? This was on a Saturday. Well, my Saturday. Dad, well, so anyway. well, my dad would buy a, tr a semi load of treated in the spring, and then that had to get a, on. Um, we didn't have space in the yard, so we had to actually put that away by hand in the second story. Yes. So so after school and then on weekends, Dad paid Chad and I maybe five bucks an hour, and then we'd unload that by hand, that semi, because that semi carried us, or would carry my dad basically through almost the summer enough treated wood, but somebody had to put it away. So, so it was just me and Chad at night after school and then on weekends by ourselves. So then we came up with this idea. Go ahead, Dad. Yeah, so then... So they're staying there Saturday, okay, Saturday afternoon, yard closed up at noon, which sometimes you get out there to one side. It got to be four or five o'clock or whatever. I thought, well, I better go check on these cronies and see how the heck they're doing. No here, big you know? money, five bucks an hour. I mean, we made like 20 bucks that afternoon. Yeah, well, back then, I mean, high, yeah. yeah, they learned high so, cotton. So I get out of the car and I hear the speakers are just full bore playing some songs, you know. It's like, what in the hell is going on now, you know. Well, here they took a radio, I think, and put it right in front of the speaker, taped the speaker down, so the music was going to all through That's pretty good. Yeah. That's around that sound nice. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Virtual so, Pandora. Yeah. So <laughs> the entertainment whole, system there. So the whole town could hear it. I got there. We and didn't I realize it was that loud. We were like, you know, because you, know, yeah. you come in the first you were, time. You, you were giant. Right. You, you know, on Friday, you kind of, the first time you do it, you keep it quiet. Next time you do it. And then it's Saturday afternoon, it's like you just crank it, right? Yeah. How far can I get this till I get in trouble yeah. or again? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't think we were even aware that the neighbors could hear it, right? You just live in your own little. Well, the whole West End of town could hear it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. It, was, it was louder than the picnic, I thought. But so anyway, I got there and I took the tape off the speakers. So when I walked out the yard, and they were like, oh, "What's going to happen now?" <laughs> it was fine. Yeah. When did you start uh, labeling, you know, by numbers in the yard? Since you said you didn't have that labeled originally, when when did that come about? Well, it just got confusing. We just started doing it. You know, just started the process of you know, and the, all the technology these days just kept on coming. Just, just yeah. kept on coming. It you know, still we, is. We, we didn't have any process, procedures, or anything. And then you'd hire people and somebody would have an idea. And then you were kind of getting bigger. And you're like, well, that would help everybody. So that's kind of how it started. And even today, you know, people say, well, we're changing a lot and growing a lot. We always did because you always have to. You know, if we didn't do that, we still wouldn't have numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, and I pick on people that say, well, we shouldn't grow so much. And I said, yes, we should have quit growing the second we hired you. Right, yeah. or we shouldn't have changed so much. Yeah. Yep, we should never have did numbers on the yard. No, that was a good idea. Right, but no other changes. Yeah, what, at what point does it stop? Yeah, right? what point do, you, what point do yeah. we continue improvement right. getting better, so? Well, in my theory is if a tree doesn't grow, it soon dies. 
If something doesn't grow, if the company doesn't grow, it'll soon disappear. The bigger it is, the longer it'll take to disappear. But if it keeps on getting in new endeavors and new ideas and new people, and youth brings vigor and vitality, and look at you, I mean, Joel's not young anymore by no means, but whatever. That, that's the goal that old that makes me dad. <laughs> I know you feel like you are, so. <laughs> but you're catching up, percentage wise, you're really getting there. It seems that way. <laughs> yeah. well, when you were 10 and I was 30, you, you were a lot younger than me. Yeah, I mean, now you're only a couple percentage uh, points off. Feels that way, too. <laughs> But I mean, once that happened, we let, let people grow, and, and of course, the sad point is you got to let people go too. You know, people didn't grow with us, so that's yep. that's, that's, that's and a that sad still thing. happens. No, oh, it still happens. happens yes, yeah. yes. And you know, people can handle change, and some people can't handle change. But we, they've all got these now. That was a change, right? Yeah, the internet is what my dad's talking about. For Cell sure. phones. So, 2010, um, the acquisition of Drexel Interiors in Brookfield, mm -hmm. and 2012, I believe it was. Was when everything the four or the three lumberyard locations and Drexel Interiors becomes Drexel. Mm -hmm. What all went into that decision? Obviously, made sense, right, in terms of name branding to bring it all together. But what what all went into that decision? Well, I was the I was the marketing person. We didn't have a marketing person. Um, well, we did. It was me. And uh, wait a minute, what about me? What do you well, think? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'd run, yeah, he had a lot of good. But he had a lot of good he, ideas. He's brought up before on the podcast about how you look in the Wall, Wall Street, Street Journal, Journal and for ideas, for, yeah, for ads yeah. and stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah, my dad was. Um, very good at marketing, and and but I did kind of the kind of like Megan's role, you know. I kind of brought my dad's ideas to life, or or did the day to day duties of the marketing, putting t shirts and hats and whatever, um, and put some spins on it at times. And uh, you know, it got to be like we were NASCAR, you know. I mean, every time we did a, a store, we had four stores, so all shirts had to have four logos or four different logos. So you'd make can koozies, and okay, so you're gonna do four different kind of can koozies for the four logos. You're going to have one can koozie with the four logos on it because it really still is one company. Um, got to the point where you kind of would be at a Packer game and it'd say, Mark, I'd be sitting next to you like, where do you work? And I'd say, where do you live? Because people didn't understand that the brand was connected. Um, kind of, I remember talking to my dad about it saying, hey, before we have five stores, which is enough, every time you open a location is absolute chaos, or it was back then, or at least by a company, it was yeah, just true. absolute chaos. It's much better now. Um, we have more more team to, to support to take a change and all that. But at that time, it was absolutely all hands on deck at the new location. It was like a new baby. Um, well, part of it was when we first started, we had Camel Sport Building Supply Inc. and then we had Berlin Building Supply Inc. And we had two different corporations because if somebody would sue us, they you couldn't they couldn't take, take down the, the whole company. thing. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we had Keel, and then we had three corporations, mm -hmm. and then we got the fourth one. Then in order to borrow the money, they, we, they, the bank required us all to bring it all together. So then the corporate veil had been broken. So if somebody's going to sue us, they'd be, they're, they're inside the bowels of the company anyhow. So it you, you needed the collateral. You yeah. know, you needed the collateral. They said, okay, you can't, you really can't buy Brookfield. But if we can bring the collateral in from Keel, then at that point it was all the same company anyway. And a lawyer would say, this is all the same company. Yes, you have four logos, but it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Yeah. So that kind of started the trend. Then I said, before we have five locations, we really should come up with a name. And it was uh, kind of a classic Drexel fashion. We did not hire a, mar a third party. We never even talked to a third party marketing company. It was completely internal conversations and it went very rapidly. I mean, when, in the course of a few weeks, we had it. Uh, the, uh, the Drexel logo we have now, that, that swoosh D, was from the original Drexel ad in the 1970s. That was their logo in the 70s. They had a different logo, more of an 80s logo with aqua and purple colors and a little different Drexel style. I love the font, love the look of the old school. Some team members didn't love it. They're like, that looks really, you know, old. And I'm like, yeah, we're bringing the old back, That'd be which is me. classic. That'd be me. Yeah. I didn't like the name. I'm not sure I like the name yet. Yeah. So, uh, so my dad really wanted Fleischman Building Supply to some degree. I think was your, would be the one you were stuck on. I was thinking, a a AJ's, Elbert Joel's. I was yeah, thinking AJ's. About, yeah. AJ's. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. So you agree with that? Well, and you had mentioned Blue Badger, right? Yeah. I mean, I had talked about Blue Badger, which would be Wisconsin-based. Blue color. Uh, talked. I like blues for a while. B L U E S or B L even O O S. Just blues building supply. I really liked early bird. Remember early bird? Early bird was around. I really liked early bird for a long time because we had always started historically early. Yeah. And I just thought it was like a positive thing. Early bird building supply. Which one would have been your number two? If if you would have collectively between you two agreeing together, what would have been number two? Whatever he wanted. I gave up. Uh, <laughs> I threw in the towel. I probably was on blues. Blues. Blues building supply. Uh, really wanted something soft edge, the, um, flooring cabinetry, something with a harder edge to pick up studs, you sure. know. And then end of the day, I think what, what really triggered it for me, I had an idea or a thought at one point, it doesn't matter 
they're builder we're selling to builders and not retail we could change your name every 30 days they're buying from the people within the walls yep. the name itself won't matter and then when i had that idea i thought drexel 25 percent of our customers that were buying from brookfield already knew the name drexel so we right. didn't have to change one of the stores. Yeah, right. Didn't have to change that's one of the stores. That's where I kind of keep it. Well, <laughs> it's money twenty-five wise, percent yeah. done. <laughs> it kind of was right. The story yeah. of twenty-five percent of the story was done. Yeah, right? and we did. Uh, it was crazy. How did we market that? Right, like that's a huge move. We didn't. I said if we minimize it, it will be minimized. So we just sent out a letter. Your new address goes here. A paragraph or two to the builder of hey, this is why we changed to consolidate and, and be unified and. And Joe was 100% right. Builders really don't care what the name is. Just change right. the bill. Right. As long as they get their product on time and at a fair price, that's all. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, I know you guys probably aren't either big like regret guys, like, oh, I regret doing that. But is there one thing, looking back, you would have changed? Probably did something else. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what it'd be. I mean, we made mistakes, but we rolled with them, and that was it, you know. I. I yeah, I, I mean... Uh, Boy, regret is tough because again, you learn from every single mistake in life and you look back and you think God had a reason for every mistake in life and business. And it's hard to say regrets when you kind of follow that pattern of you just learn from what the mistakes you made. But man, if I had to pick a regret, you know, if I had to pick a regret, it was probably going down the path that we did for five or 10 years of bringing in um, outside salesmen that were had very big egos and were very not trustworthy and really propping them up as, as gods to some degree. I, I wouldn't have did that. But but what that did was bring in accounts that we have um, helped secure to this day and brought and did work and brought in market share. Um, probably wouldn't be where we're here without them either. So I can't even say that's a regret. Mm -hmm. um, that was probably a stressful period looking back. But I would have probably had regrets. more confidence, should have had more confidence and went faster in the beginning it was opportunities that i just said no we're big enough and my wife joni was probably she's not gonna like this either but probably holding me back and saying oh he better not be doing this yet you know i don't know why you can't be satisfied with what you have but i would have said hey let's 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 get this let's get this company let's do this you know i mean it was every every town had a small lumber yard everyone kiwaskum camel sport eden they all did. Mount Calvary, all of them did. Right? All of them did. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Kewaskum, yeah. Uh, wherever you live, they had a town. If there's rail, tra if there's a railroad tracks in Main Street, that's a remnant of a lumber yard. I can almost guarantee it yep. across the country. Sure. Yep. And they had a feed mill, and you know, everything came by rail in those days. And so there was opportunities there that we didn't take advantage of that we could have. But I'm not sure it would have been advantage. But looking back, maybe it should have been, you know, whatever. It was, but we did fine. So, yep. so you guys touched on the Drexel name and maybe you know Albert not being a big fan of that at the time is there anything that for both of you that drove you crazy based on a decision that the other one made <laughs> no I don't think so I mean or one like oh I wouldn't have done that well I'm sure I told Joel that many times you know we there was one one story you told him and Craig Johnson they decided they're going to put in tools Milwaukee tools I go oh, about DeWalt, that, DeWalt tools. DeWalt tools. Factory direct. I thought they were walking. Whatever. Oh, DeWalt. That. DeWalt. Yeah. 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 DeWalt, so DeWalt cordless. When cordless just hit the stores. So I was like, I don't. We really want to get into that. But if you guys want to run with it, I'm not going to get involved. And in you take care of it. You know. Of course, we had a whole wall full of tools hanging on one wall. You know, and that was just beautiful. And of course, we didn't have no service department. So when somebody wanted service on a tool, it didn't work. And one year later, that whole wall was changed. It was no more tools. <laughs> we actually gave. We actually gave the last tools away at our contractor Christmas party. <laughs> no, it was yeah. that bad of a bad of decision. Uh, part of the reason I think was not so much the service was I didn't appreciate um, two things. I didn't appreciate when salesmen tell you they can't sell, they're not gonna that they're not able to sell something. If a salesperson tells you I, I'm not gonna be able to sell, it, they're salesmen. They say I can't sell this. You should believe them. And our sales force was like, I'm not selling those. I'm like, no, this is great. <laughs> and my dad was kind of like supporting that. Like, no, we're not going to sell those. Like, probably should believe people when they say they're not going to sell it. They're going to prove you right 100% right. of the time. So that's a great business little tip. But, um, but you know, I mean, I, I think wasn't upset about it. The end of the day, was, was baby. And the end of the day was like, and they learned. So. It was kind of like having a shoe store, but you only have Nikes. No matter how much you love Nikes, again, unless you're a Nike store, you want to see a variety. You want to try different shoes on. So people want different tools than just one brand. Yep. That was a bad one.
Uh, as far as anything, I regret my dad. But we did. never had a major argument about it. I've never. I, I don't remember ever having a work argument with my dad, or maybe we hardly argue about anything. Uh, in fact, we kind of had a saying, and because some, it still kind of happens a little bit. Um, I remember people would be kind of like, you ask mom for something, you ask dad for something, right? So they would ask, they would call me, and then I like halfway through the conversation. This was when dad and I were more day to day. I like, have you? I could kind of sense it. Have you already talked to my dad about this? And they're like, yeah, I thought totally different. And I would literally just shut the conversation down. I said, whatever my dad said is what we're going with. Do not call me and do this to me or yourself or to my dad. I said, what a waste of time and money and effort. Plus, whatever he's got, that's it. It's done. And he would kind of just pause. And I'm like, I'm hanging up now. And we really encourage, like, don't call both of us because we're going to probably look at things polar opposite, but whatever, either way. So Yeah, go and directly that, to him. Don't get me involved And it's a, right that's now. a good business lesson and life lesson, right? I mean, my dad thought differently about some things than me but either way you're going down one path and you'll just adjust if you have to so if that's my dad said go run with it well and we all learn from our mistakes and that we make mistakes we don't really how big they are at the time or how small they are at the time but you go like no i tried that we're not doing that again you know well maybe we should try it one more time and then you try it again it works or maybe it didn't work because of this so you you tweak it and keep on tweaking that's throughout your life you do that you, you say geez i should do this well no maybe I should do that no i tried fishing over here it didn't work i'll go fishing over there whatever it is i go deer hunting over there no i go deer hunting over there whatever just so you just keep on tweaking it and, and honestly, my dad and I didn't know, right? I mean, a lot of the questions we don't know either. We have to make a decision, but we don't know. I think that's probably one of the biggest still illusions in the company is that Joel knows, right? Like, just call him, he'll know, right? I see people come to my office, they're like, what do you want me to do? Or call me, and I'm like, I don't know, right? I have an idea, this is what I would do. Well, is it gonna work? I, I, mean, I don't know. And they kind of look at me like, well, you know, you're just setting me up to fail. So I'm like, no one, t I always said it this way, like I think the biggest illusion with kind of starting a business or running a business is you have, it's a book, right? And every page from 1985 till today, that book is, is a wonderful book. It's been wonderfully written. The, the crazy thing, and I think, I don't think anybody understands that because they always think, Joe, what's the future? Give me the vision, what, what are we doing next? I'm like, here's the thing, every single page of Drexel is empty. Like, there's no future. I don't know. I know exactly as much as you do in this moment, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know either. Well, you must know. Like, God doesn't, an entrepreneur, a business person, an owner, or whatever, just like your life. I mean, think of anybody's families here. You might guess what you're going to be in five years with your family. I'm guessing you're going to be totally wrong. They always say, right, we've talked about that before in the podcast, you know, make a plan and, and God's going to laugh, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, and that's the truth. You think of the technology since 1985. We had no cell phones. You, you didn't have no GPS. You had you didn't have any of that, and so it all evolved. And it just and it keeps on evolving. And the technology, we just the company has to stay with it. As a human being, you have to stay with it. I've got relation that really can't run, be, be on a computer. Some that hardly have a phone, and they're so far behind it. You, know, you, you never you never stay caught up. And I'm not a, a good man. I'm not a nerd like you guys are, but. <laughs> You guys, you guys are right deep into it. I can't, and I'll never get. But I'm going to try to stay with it because if I don't stay with it, it'll be gone. Yeah. And I mean, the new technology. At least comes no one out. know enough to be dangerous. And you can see, yeah. my dad talks a lot about technology. My dad, I give him a lot of credit, has always talked about technology being as a game changer. And our industry is so incredibly slow. Yes, amen. It, I mean, this is the truth. I'm 50 years old. If I wanted to put this son of a bitch, if you will, on cruise control. We wouldn't have to make a damn change for 20 years, and we'd still be ahead of the competition. And frankly, there's probably a few people on our team that says, great, ride it out. Yeah. But that's we're going to be so far behind after 20 years. And, and you know, I'll pick on them. USLBM, Wisconsin Building Supply, I'll pick on BFS. Our two corporate giants don't ever change. And guy, if you're listening, you're falling behind by the second. If not, to Drexel, somebody else. And there's always going to be competition, so I can pick on them or I can pick on somebody else. Or you can pick on me, I don't care. But you got to keep going forward quick or you're falling behind way quicker than you think. But there's also a mindset with that too, right? Where if you're constantly doing that, that's just what you are and who you, and, and what mm -hmm. you do, right? Yeah, As correct, opposed to correct. we do this once a year and it's like, oh yep. my God, here yes. it comes that time again, yeah. you know, yes. like where people yes. just panic. and yes. yeah, and, yeah, and then you're afraid. Again, once you pause with change, you're absolutely afraid of change. You yeah. have to embrace it. Yep. You know, when people ask me and say, well, what do you think we should do? I say, well, what do you think we should do? Tell me what you're thinking you want to do. And why do you want to do it that way? Well, if you think it's good, well, then we'll make sense. Let's do it. Yep. You know, If you want to go out to eat tonight, good. Why, why do you want to go out to eat tonight? We're well, hungry. Okay, we'll go out to eat. Where do you want to go? I don't care. <laughs> you know? Wherever you want to go, we'll go. That's it. Business is not much difference. Yeah. Same. same you know, thing. I think we should really get into this. Well, then why do you want to get into it? Because we'll make money and the builders want it. Well, that makes a lot of sense. If like, I don't know, it'll just be fun. Well, that doesn't make sense. Right. <laughs> One of the last ones before we finish up here, what's the biggest thing you've learned from each other? Oh, I love them. Oh, that's awesome. I love you too, Dad.
Yeah, that's great. Uh, what I learned best from my dad? Yeah, he's got a very um, hard side, but he has fun in life, uh, has a strong faith, strong family. Um, I learned a lot of faith and family from my dad, uh, but also how to have a lot of fun and be a tough guy when he got to. I, I think my dad, I think probably this is the number one thing now that I have time to, a second to think about it. My dad shoots people straight. Tells them maybe not what they want to hear, uh, but what they tell need the to, truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. But what they need to hear. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's still the truth, but also like he shoots them damn straight. I mean, to the point that might piss them off. Uh, but that's my, but my dad's respected because of that. I think because if you want to know what my dad's thinking, he's going to say it. And again, and, and it's going to hopefully be to your best interest. Um, and again, he's got a lot of faith that it isn't always display, but that that's pretty cool too. Might have some faith, yeah. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> we all need it, right? But I've had we people in a meeting, and then they're leaving the room. I go, nope, I didn't handle it right. Come back here. I got to tell you what I'm trying to tell you right now, and I'm going to explain it to you. And this is how it's going to be because this ain't working what you're doing, you know what I mean? And just lay it on the line with them, you know? So yep. some people come up with ideas that just don't make any sense, but some are great. For sure. Some are just great ideas, so. To finish up, uh, classic billboard. It wouldn't be a Joel Fleischman Happy Hour podcast unless we did that. Huh? Um, so you got one book, billboard, Albert, anybody can see it in the world. It could be work, family, um, anything related to it. Um, to anything, what's your billboard, right? Yep. What would be your billboard and why? Believe in God, enough said. Simple to the point. Not super surprised, are you, Marcus? No, not really. Amen. Joel, you had to change to yours. I mean, we've, you've said it a few times on some of the ones that you've had, um, like St. Padre Pio, or you have all Yeah, pray, hope, and don't worry. Yep. I think mine's always going to change. So currently, if I had to really pick one. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, right. Uh, well, Imagine things that. shift, drift, right? I don't think you'd have the same one. Maybe some people would have forever. Currently, one that I'm kind of stuck on, that I like, that I read, I, I just had the thought about it. If I had a big, giant billboard, it would say, um, get to heaven, bring others with you. And I think that's just like, that's kind of the goal, isn't it? Like go to heaven. I mean, for if you really believe and if that's what you really think, like what else is there? You go to heaven and hopefully you drag some other people with you. That's pretty I think, cool. I think you could have said a lot shorter. Just say believe in God. Believe in God. That's, there's a difference between dad and I. <laughs> this is the difference here. That's the difference. That's a good way to finish it up. All right, episode 100. All you right. Did great. Thank you guys for Thanks, Marcus. Thanks for having us on, Marcus. Yep. Peace and love, everybody.